can I share a Google Drive file with somebody that hasn't got a Google account? What happens if I delete a shared file? Does it delete for everybody else as well? I wonder what the maximum number of people I can manually add when sharing a file is in Google Drive. Hello, hello, Sharon here, and I'm gonna answer these questions and more in this video where I share all there is to know about sharing files and folders in Google Drive. So let's crack on. So first off, how do you know when a file or folder is actually shared with anybody? So if you log into your Google Drive and you're in the grid view like this, click on the icon in the top right corner to change it to list view. And you'll see that any files that are shared will have this little people symbol, this people icon to the right of the file names. With folders, the icon appears inside the folder um, icon itself. So as you can see here, these two are shared as opposed to this one that doesn't have the um, sharing symbol in there. And if you want to quickly see who's got access to the files or folders that are shared, all you need to do is select the file or folder click on the eye symbol up in the top right corner here to view the details. So if you click on details, this brings up a list of details such as who's got access to this file or folder. And if you click into the activity, you'll be able to see when it was last modified and opened and it lists all the changes made, when they were made and by whom. And then to come out, just click on the cross. To easily see the files or folders that somebody else has shared with you, Click on the shared with me folder over on the left hand side in the menu here and this lists everything that's been shared with you. Now if you keep the file in here you'll always have access to the most recent version of that file. However it does mean that if the owner then removes the file it will also be removed from your shared with, shared with me folder. Now depending on the permissions the owner has set up you may be able to save a copy of the file yourself. So to do that all you need to do is right click on the file and go down to make a copy. It's created a copy and it's now been saved into my drive. So that now actually belongs to me. If the owner of the file then removes it, you'll still have your copy in your own drive. Um, just be aware that it won't be the latest version. It will be the version that you made a copy of at that time. So this works well if you've been given access to a template that you want to work on. Make a copy of it first before you start working on it and it will be saved into your drive. So to begin with, we're gonna look at sharing folders. Now there's several ways to access the sharing options to share a folder. The first way is to just right click on the folder and go to share. And this brings up the sharing options. Another way is to click once on the folder name so it's selected and then click on the person with the plus symbol next to it in the top right corner here. Click on there and it will bring you to the same sharing options as before. If you're actually in the folder itself and you want to share it, then you can click on the drop down arrow to the right of the name here at the top and go to share and it will share the main folder. The same goes if you have subfolders within this folder. So just navigate to the subfolder that you want to share. So if I say this one and again, click on the drop down arrow next to the name, go to share and it will say that you're sharing this particular subfolder here. Once you've accessed the sharing options, you can manually add either the person's name or the email address. If you don't want to manually add people each time, then a handy way of sharing the folder is to just get a link and share the link with people instead. So to do that, right click on the folder and go down to get link. And then just copy link here. Another way of getting the link is to again, click once on the folder name to select it and click the link icon up in the top right corner here and again, copy link here. If you want to share an individual file, the same options are actually available. So you can right click on the file name and go to share, and it will bring up the same sharing options that way. Or you can click on the file name to select it and then go up to the person with the plus symbol icon in the top corner here, and that will bring up the same sharing options. Or if you're in the file itself, then you can click on the share button, which is located in the top right corner here. You may notice that this button is a different color depending on which app you're in. So for example, in Google Docs, which is what I'm in now, it's blue. In Google Sheets, it's green and it's orange in Google Slides. So you just click on share. And again, it brings up the same sharing options there. And the final way is if again, you're inside the file, go to file and share and then share with others. 
and again it brings up the same sharing options. So just the same as when you're sharing a folder, you can manually add people in by typing in their name or email address in here. You can then choose whether you want to notify people, which sends them an email letting them know that you've shared the file or folder with them. You can also type out your own message in this box here if you want to. One thing to note is that if you've added more than one person, then they will all see each other's email address in the notification email. And if you don't want to notify anybody, then you just untick the box there and click share. As before, you can also share a link to the file instead of manually adding people. To do that, right click on the file name and click get link and then copy link as before or click once on the file name and then click up, then go up to the get link icon in the top corner here. And again, it will bring up the same information. Now, a real quick time saver is if you find yourself sharing files and folders with the same people over and over and over again, think about adding them as a group in your Google contacts and then share the file or folder with the group itself. So to do that, you need to first create your group in Google contacts. So log into your Google account and click on the nine square grid in this top right corner and go to contacts. Click on create label over on the left hand side and give your label a name and click save. You'll now see that this label is here and then just add the people you want to include in this group. So to add someone individually, hover over the person's name, click on the three dots over on the right hand side and select the actual name of the label that you want to apply. You'll now see that there's a number next to this label name that I've just created. That tells you how many contacts are in that label. To add multiple people at the same time, hover over the person's name and a checkbox will appear to the left of it. Tick there for each one and then move up to the top and go to the icon. When you hover over it, it says manage labels. Click on there and click on the actual label that you want them to move to and click apply. And you'll now see that both of those have been added to the tutorials label that I've just created here. So that technically is the name of the group that I'm gonna do. So now you go back into your Google Drive, right click on the name of the file or folder that you want to share, click share. And instead of adding in the person's name, start typing the name of the label that you've just created in your contacts. Google will list the labels for you to choose from and you just choose the one that you want. Choose the permissions that you want to set for the group, include an email or message to the group if you want to, and then click send. If you're not notifying people with a message, then just uncheck the box and click share. So now you know how to give people access, you need to know what you're allowing them to do. So let's talk about permissions and access levels. Now there's two different levels of access in Google Drive. There's the editor, who is allowed to change the permissions of anyone else who's got access to that particular file or folder, and they can also share the file with other people. And the second level is viewer and commenter. They get the same level of access. So they can basically um, download, print, or make a copy of the file. So when you add a person, click on the arrow over on the right-hand side here, and that will change the permission or the role of that person. So for example, they can be viewer, commenter, or editor. It's worth noting that the permissions that you set here are tied to the link itself and not the person who shares it. So let's say we're, we're giving them, we're saying that they're going to be a viewer, but you don't want them to be able to download the file itself. Well, you've also got the ability to stop viewers from being able to download, print or copy a file. All we need to do is click on the cogwheel here for settings and you've got an option here. Viewers and commenters can see the option to download, print and copy uncheck that box and they won't be able to. The same goes with editors. You can untick that box so editors can't change permissions and they can't share the file either. It's just a bit of added security for when you're sharing files and folders. Next, if you're sharing a link to a file, so instead of adding people here, you would copy the link here at the bottom, but you need to check your general access first. So this will either show as restricted or anyone with a link. If it's restricted, then only those you've given access to up here in this section, only they can see it. If you want to share your files with non-Google users, you use the link, but you change the restricted to anyone with the link instead. So anybody on the internet with this link can view it. You'll also see you've got the same levels here on the right hand side, so you can change the level of access. If you're allowing anyone with the link to have access to it, then it's probably better to keep it as viewer, just so they can't make any changes to it. 
and it's also worth remembering that whoever has the link will always be viewing the most recent version of the file or folder. If you want to stop sharing the file or folder with a specific person, click back into the sharing options and then click on the down arrow to the right of the person's name and you can remove access and then click save. If you've shared a file via a link, then go back into the sharing options again and under the general access section here, change it so that it's restricted. So only people that you've added above can gain access to it and then click done. If you're the owner of a shared file or folder and you want to delete it, simply right click on the file name and click remove. This will move it to the bin folder, which is over here on the left hand side. And it stays in here for 30 days before being permanently removed. If at any time you want to restore it, just right click on the file name and click restore. When you remove a shared file or folder, then the shared access is also removed, meaning that nobody has access to it anymore unless anyone you've shared it with then makes a copy of it in their own drive. If you want to remove the file from your drive but still want the shared access to be available, then you'll need to make someone else the owner before removing it. So to do that, right click on the file or folder and go to share, then click on the drop down arrow to the right of the person here and click on transfer ownership. Click send invitation and note that you will still be the owner until that person accepts the ownership transfer. Once ownership is transferred, you can then go ahead and remove the file without it affecting anyone else that you've shared it with. If somebody else has shared a file with you, so in the shared with me folder here, if somebody else has shared a file with you and you want to remove it, then you can right click on it and just click remove and it will remove it from your drive and it doesn't actually affect anybody else. So there are a couple of things that you may not be aware of regarding the limitations in Google Drive and the whole sharing thing. And Google actually does have a limit to the number of people you can add as a collaborator. So when you share a file and you're manually adding the people at the top, you can't share with more than 200 people. There's a limit at the time of recording this video, the limit is 200 people. So to get around that, you would obviously do the get link feature and share a link instead. Google also has a limit to the number of people who can be in the file editing and commenting at the same time, and that's limited to 100 people. So do you use the sharing feature in Google Drive? If so, I hope this has cleared up any questions that you may have had. But if not, and you still have more questions, then ask away in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.